Hello and welcome to my October wrap up. October was solid reading month. I read about 11 books. Considering how busy I was and how stressed I got to the point where I was like, I can't read, I consider that a win. I consider that a win. So it was a lot of Kindle books just because when I get stressed, I tend to be like, I don't want to read anything physically. Like I can't think about picking up a book. So Kindle just makes it really easy for me to read. So let's just, without further ado, get into all that I read in October. I'm sticking really strongly to my goal of doing a wrap up for every month of the year. So I'm excited. I started off the month by reading Wilder Girls by Rory Power. This is about a all girls boarding school on this remote main island and they're all like under quarantine because they have this thing known as the talks and it's kind of like turning them otherworldly. I read this one on audio. Um, it is queer. It's an all-girls school. So you know the girls are kind of stuck together on the island. Um, it's definitely very... It's supposed to be horror but it reads more like dystopian horror to me because it's kind of like this virus not virus but like this thing that like mutates them and it's very like survivalist like lord of the flies vibes i ended up giving it three stars i thought it was really solid i liked how from one of the girls povs like it was um like broken poetry kind of i always enjoy that in books but besides that um you know like the horror was like good but it just I kind of had a hard time being like super engaged in the story. I thought it kind of dragged at some parts and it ended up being again like more like survivalist less horror-y and the ending kind of like annoyed me because I didn't like how open-ended it was left. I was like I want like more of a conclusion but maybe that's just me as a reader you know gravitating towards stories that have more of a conclusion. Next I read Alien Tyrant by Ursa Dax. I read my first Ursa Dax book last month and I decided to start her first series. I've been like on a serious alien romance kick this year in this first series. Um, we follow these girls and they're basically kidnapped by their government and brought to this alien world and once they land, like, they're trying to, like, study these sea sand warlords that live on the planet. And our main girl is a linguist, and she's, like, trying to decipher the language of these people. And then our main guy has a vision in this, like, sacred pool of his fated mate. And he sees our main girly, and he's, like, she looks really weird. But then he sees her when um, they attack the ship of humans that lands on the planet. And then it's, like, her having to figure out, like, how to survive on this planet. You know, I thought it was fine. I enjoyed like the premise and the setup of this world. I thought like the sea sand world was really fun. You know, it was just, it was good. It was fine. So I gave it three stars. Next, I was like, you know, if I'm reading all these alien romances, I might as well return to the world of Ice Planet Barbarians. And I read the ninth book, Barbarian's Heart. And in this, we have Stacey and Pashov, and we see them together from the first books but then something happens and he gets amnesia and he doesn't remember her or their son and I definitely um really enjoyed this I just love all the Ice Planet Barbarians books I find them like super bingeable really good starting point for alien romance and just like really fun escapist Ruby Dixon has this world all figured out and still has like fresh and fun ways to make it entertaining even after so many books in the series uh, so definitely a little bit more of like a softer tone just because Stacy is more of like a soft softer domestic character like she loves cooking for everyone she just like loves taking care of her son and it was so heartbreaking to see the angst because like her mate doesn't remember her and that's the person that she's relied on ever since she came to this planet like it is really hard and just like to see them reunite throughout the story was just I don't know I thought it was beautiful and well done and of course we got some more world building going on in terms of like things that are just going on in the ice planet in general and you know it, it was a good installment in the series so I gave it four stars. Next, I read A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed, and this was a buddy read with Tori from Tori Between Pages. We ended up doing sprints, and we both were reading at the same time, which was really fun. This is my first book by Ava, but it definitely will not be my last. They have such a beautiful writing style, and even though this book is, like, short, kind of, I just feel like I was taken on a journey. So, it just, like, is a book that, like, it's just written so beautifully, has so many, like, 
beautiful lines of prose and just really makes you think. Okay, so what is it about? We follow Effie Sayer and in this world, women aren't allowed in the literature college because it's like seen as the top college of the world of this like university in this country and so only like men are allowed because the thought is like only men can analyze literature so she has all the top test scores but she settles for going to the architecture college so because her real love is literature she is obsessed with this book called Ungarad which was written by like her favorite author he's like super famous he's like the most beloved author in the whole like country and he had recently passed away and his family like puts out an advert that they want an architect to students to come and like redesign the family manor which is like all the way in the south so we start at the school and then we go southwards to this like seaside dilapidated mansion and basically the book angrad is about the fairy king and like what Angarad, the main character like goes through like trying to escape him but yet Effie has been like plagued her whole life with visions of this fairy king but then when she gets to the manor there's another student there also doing work on this author and his name is Preston and they kind of start out in this rivals situation because they have like very different goals and they do their ideologies don't really align okay so this is just such a unique and interesting premise that has like a lot of different things going on and it seems like it almost wouldn't work just because of the different threads of the story but they're just woven together expertly and the way that this is the kind of book that when you're reading it you're not sure what the actual rules of the reality that you are reading in are but it's just like bent so expertly that you just like can't tell like what exactly is going on but you're just enthralled the whole time and it's like so cool to see these realities bend and like try and figure out like what exactly is going on like there are just so many mysteries going on in there and Effie and Preston have such like this really cute really just like precious relationship that evolves but then we also have like the terror of the fairy king and everything that is going on with that and the story of Angarad and like I think at its core it's really about like almost a commentary on being a woman and having men feel that they need to speak for you or take your stories from you and like the power that comes from telling your own story and I feel like that message was just so like so expertly like this is just a beautiful book of course we have like this gothic seaside dilapidated setting with like a dash of dark academia and a dash of rivals but just like the way everything was described like I feel like this book was just an experience it was just an experience to read and you should all read it and experience it for yourself because like I just feel like I can't properly encapsulate everything that this book was and of course I gave it five stars clearly like I'm raving about it right now <laughs> but yeah um I just I just thought it was brilliant I honestly thought it was brilliant and I need more next I read Madness of the Horde King by Zoe Draven Zoe Draven has quickly become one of my favorite sci-fi alien romance authors she's amazing we have this world of the Horde Kings which if you like the Dothraki from Game of Thrones it's kind of like a similar vibe um, but we have these people that are native to this planet and they are like a nomadic people and the horde kings each like rule their own horde and they're kind of like an interconnected society. Then we have this horde king who is believed to be mad. At the same time we have the human colonies and they're kind of like there because the Dothraki gave them permission so they have to like abide by the rules of the Dothraki but like the human governing bodies like don't give them enough resources. So this leads to a lot of trouble because then the humans will like disobey the rules of the Dothraki to hunt and stuff like that. So we have a VN and she is like a captive of the Gurtin which are this other species that is the enemy of the uh, Dakari and she's kind of like sent into the city to deliver a message to the king and while she's there she runs into this mad horde king Davik and he has like this madness swirling in him and he doesn't like he kind of doesn't really like understand it and Vienne has like this gift to feel and manipulate emotion and so she does that to him and like he just can't stop thinking about her and then so you know events occur and they end up just having this like very angst-filled relationship there is just like a lot of like emotions and thought and world building that just goes into all of Zoe Draven's stories and like 
I eat them up every single time. I feel like the world is so good, the characters are so good, and they're just like the best of alien romances. And I, of course, gave this one five stars because I loved it. Next, I read All the Dead Lie Down by Kyrie McCauley. So I read this one on audio. Marin's mother recently passed away, and so she gets this letter in the mail from her mother's childhood best friend being like, hey, we actually need a nanny so like you can come live with us. And when she's there, she's like taking care of her two young daughters and they're kind of like terrors. And then their older uh, sister Evie comes back from school and then Mary and Evie kind of start to feel things for one another. But then at the same time, like really creepy things are happening all throughout this mansion. So I ended up giving this one four stars. I thought it was a really solid sapphic YA horror. The relationship between Evie and Marin was really beautiful. I thought that the way that the horror aspect of it kind of like came about was really clever and definitely a little spooky and definitely like very creepy and you have of course this dilapidated seaside manor setting again that I just I just love I just love it um so yeah it was a really solid read and I gave it four stars next I read King of Creed by Anna Wong I love Anna Wong I'm actually on her arc team so I got an early copy and oh my gosh I love this so much it's her Kings of Sin series, so like each is a contemporary billionaire romance based on a different sin. And this one, of course, was Greed, so we follow Dominic and Alessandra, and it was a marriage in trouble. And Anna has not written a marriage in trouble, and I think it can be a tricky trope because you have a couple that has so much history, and I loved it, okay? I ate up every second. Dominic just has really gotten so absorbed in his work that he kind of like forgets about Alessandra like as a person and he just assumes that she's always going to be there and she's literally like no I want a divorce and he has to grovel if you want angst if you want yearning if you want groveling this is the book it was just so well done so spicy and like I just love that Alessandra like really felt like she lost herself in the marriage but then like did all of these things to really just be her own person again and her own personal discovery like outside of just like the romance and Dominic like really just trying to learn to be like a better partner while still also being like a billionaire and like it was just so good. If you want groveling, pining, like ugh, this man has to do so much to make it up to her and I adored this. I adored this. I It was heart-wrenching like I was like <laughs> sobbing but it was so good. It was so good. Anna Huang, every book of hers I just love. I eat it up. And of course I gave it five stars. Then next I read another highly anticipated book which was Hopeless by Elsie Silver. I also have been obsessed with the Chestnut Spring series as most of the book internet and this book delivered. We're following Bo. He is the last of the Eaton siblings to not have a book and he is a uh, soldier for the Canadian Special Forces, I guess, and he has this prisoner of war situation that then like forces him to retire from the military and he's kind of considered a hero, but he is suffering from some PTSD. Then we have Bailey Jensen and she's like from this like crime family in town and has like a really bad reputation. She works at this bar that Bo like frequents more and more like as he just slips further into his PTSD and they kind of form this unlikely connection because the Eatons are like the golden family in town and the Jensen's are like the, you know, bad reputation family. And they decide, Bo wants to get his family off of his back from worrying about him and Bailey needs like something to just help improve her reputation around town so she can get a job so she can actually like save up enough money to get away from her, you know, bad family. And so they enter into a fake engagement and this is definitely more like a friend's fake engagement situation. I still loved it. I still ate it up. Gave it five stars. I just love Elsie Silver. I think she just has a really strong characterization. I love this Chestnut Springs small town that she's created and like she's just the queen of small town cowboy romance. Again this wasn't like not necessarily like cowboy cowboy because Bo is more of like a military guy and he's not but he like you know there's a little cowboy sprinkled in there but there are, definitely are other books in that series that are more cowboy but I kind of like that they're not all just straight up like the same thing like it's a family with diverse interests so yeah gave it five stars and loved it then I was like I need to read more Elsie Silver so I started her Golden Rush Ranch series and I read her first book which is Off to the Races and we follow Billy and she is a horse trainer and she gets hired at this ranch where Vaughn is, it's like his family owns a mining company and then also this ranch and his grandfather's reputation was kind of ruined so he's trying to rebuild this ranch after his grandfather's death. 
and it was very heavy on the horse racing so i was like wow did i miss the opportunity to like be a horse girl but billy was so sassy and so fun and vaughn was just like so grumpy but yet you just see these two characters like come together and there was just a lot about horse racing and I feel like I learned some things about horse racing and just a really solid read from Elsie and I gave it four stars. Then I was like let me continue on with my Elsie you know streak and I read A Photo Finish by Elsie Silver and this was a very interesting setup and premise. So we follow Violet Eden. She is the sister of the Eden brothers from Chestnut Spring series and she has come to this uh, ranch to be like a horse trainer, well, a horse groom, and then she becomes a jockey. And she's just like trying to get away from her overprotective family, essentially kind of strike out on her own. And so one of the things that she does to kind of like feel rebellious is she posts a naked picture on this forum and then strikes up a friendship kind of with this anonymous guy on the internet. And then we find out that that guy is actually Cole, who is the brother of Vaughn, and so he like, you know, owns this ranch, and then he has to come to the ranch, and they end up like living in the same place in the ranch, and it's just like tension because there's obviously something, some reason that they like stopped speaking, and okay, yes, of course you have to set aside the unbelievability of the fact that like the person that you had an anonymous internet thing with was just happened to be in like the same location as you, and like, yeah, okay, that part the odds are really not in your favor but if you put that aside and just like take the story for what it is oh my god like there was just so much angst and tension and like the fact that they like already kind of had this like sexual connection and them like trying to just figure out and like there was a kind of like a plot twist at the end or like a reveal about a character and like oh it tore at my heartstrings but I just thought it was all so well done and I loved it and I don't really like the spice because of the way that everything was set up and I gave this one five stars. Then, of course, because it was October, I wanted a witchy romance, and I ended up picking up A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon by Sarah Hawley. And was this one of these books that was originally Raylo fanfiction? I can't recall, but I loved it. We have this place called Glimmer Falls, which I went to move to, and we have Mariel Spark. She's kind of like the heir to one of these really famous witch families, but she's like so bad at her like spellcraft and she like, just really can't get anything to work and so she's trying to like summon something for a spell and she accidentally summons a demon and now the demon is like bound to take her soul she didn't actually want a bargain so he kind of is like just has to stick around but then our demon Osroth the ruthless he's legendary however because of a bargain gone wrong he now like has a soul and oh my god this was the cutest freaking thing i have ever read if you want like witchy cute vibes like this was everything to me. This was everything to me. Also, like, Marielle is curvy, and we keep, like, hearing about how Azeroth is obsessed with her curves, which, like, I just appreciate that in books. But, like, the magic was so fun, and, like, just seeing Marielle, like, come into her power and, like, really stand up to her family was amazing. And Azeroth, like, having to come to terms with his, like, morality and feelings. You know that Grinch meme that's like, help me, I'm feeling? That was literally Azeroth the entire book. I ended up reading this on audio and I just bought a physical book because I was obsessed with it. I thought it was so cute. There's another book in the series coming out soon, Falling Caladia, and um, I think Azeroth. And I am highly anticipating picking that one up because this one was just so adorable. Like, just gave the, all the cozy, witchy, like, fun vibes. And I definitely think more people need to read this book because it was so cute and I gave it five stars. All right, everyone, that was all that I read in October. Solid reading month for me. I'll be back next month with a November wrap-up. And in the meantime, have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.